What's up beautiful blues people out there? Hope everybody is fine. Welcome to today's lesson. Today we're gonna talk about the number one blues riff of all times, Hoochie Coochie Man. Well, I've been uh, stumbling over a video of late and um, I was amazed by how many people, uh, you know, played this riff, how many bands played this riff from earlier times until today. So in my humble opinion, this riff gave birth to rock and roll. And that's why I believe everybody should know this by heart. And that's why I made a lesson today. As you could hear, I played five different variations of this lick. And um, from easy to easy, it's pretty much everything really easy. But uh, I've seen people playing it you know, in, in different ways. And sometimes it's like, you know, not really proper. So uh, I thought I would do, uh, you know, I would do this so you can like, you know, pimp your uh, vocabulary, your riff vocabulary. And whenever it comes to jamming blues, these riffs can all be applied to other tonalities, to other keys. So uh, yeah, let's dive right into a uh, version or, or um, variation number one, which is in the open E and open A string. And uh, by the way, we are in a, in a blues of A. We are in a shuffle groove. Sounds like this. Three, four. So we have an eight note triplet feel. It's like da ka da da ka da da ka da da. And um, we start off with the riff. The riff has a really cool rhythm pattern because actually it starts before the song starts. So once the riff ends, that's where the first beat of the of the of the of the bar starts when the actually when the vocals get in. So it's like you know the guitar is uh, questioning and the vocals is answering. So there's always a really nice space for the guitar and there's a really nice space for the vocals. So uh, if we want to uh, start the riff, uh, we have to count one, two, three. Ga da ga da da. That's how it actually uh, rhythmically uh, starts. Uh, let's now look at the notes. Very simple. I believe most of you know this uh, version right here. You have the open E string. We grab the G middle finger on the third fret of the E. We go back to the open E. We go back to the G. And we play an A power chord, which is an open A string plus the uh, first finger on the second fret of the D string. We play these together. So, let me play this whole thing with the music. You can see. So, again, open E. probably the most easy riff that exists yet it's really hard to play it in time and to play it articulated with the right <coughs> excuse me with the right attitude and all this <clears throat> so practice this variation number one let's go into variation number two which is more a clapton thing i've seen clapton playing this uh, hoochie coochie man so many times and he somehow plays something like this so instead of he would go so this is now simply starting off with a c here third fret of the a string with your middle finger an open d string then uh, E, which is in the second fret of the D string. Going back to the C, middle finger. And play the power chord again, just the way we ended up in the first version. So it's like... Let me play that to the music. That was really bad. As you can see, there's always like two beats 
in between where the vocals come in so you can also count one, two, three. <laughs> Two, three. Two, three. That's, uh, you know, how not to get lost in the rhythm. Uh, okay, um, that's now version number two. Let's right away go to version number three. This one now here shifts up to the fifth position, sort of an A minor pentatonic shape, but not really. We just use, uh, we just use fret five and fret seven for now. And uh, um, version number three is more uh, uh, based on uh, the harp player's style. The harp players, uh, if you hear the blues played from the harp players, they use that riff very often. So let me just play to the music quickly first and then I'll show it to you. <coughs> to play it like a harp if you close your eyes and play it then you almost see the harp player doing it so anyway uh, we uh, grab now for this variation number three we grab the A on the seventh fret of the D string and then we have to roll our uh, ring finger and play a bar like a bar uh, over uh, the um, G and B string on the 7th fret. We play these two strings together. It's bending too hard before, so it gets out of tune. So it's like this 7th fret here on the D string. Roll down to the B and G string. Play these together. Go back to the A. And then you put your first finger over the fifth fret over the G and B string and then play these two strings and hammer on with your middle finger into the sixth fret of the G string. And finally go back to the A here with your ring finger. So slowly. Play with the music. Two, three. And so on and so on. This is version number three. <coughs> Sorry. Version number four is now going to uh, leave the position and play this interval right here. This is also a cool interval. Cool for playing licks, cool for playing riffs. Anyway, we grab with a middle finger on the ninth fret of the G string. Uh, we grab the note E. And here we grab the note G with the uh, index finger on the uh, eighth fret of the B string. And we play these together. That's the first. Um, the first hit we have to do. Then we go down to our ring finger in the seventh fret, barring over uh, uh, B and G string. Then doing the same thing as we did before. You can actually, once you go down here. You can bar the ring finger over the D string as well, D, G and B, so it's easier. So, jamming around here. Let me just play it for you to the music so you can hear. So, <coughs> Well, uh, yeah, that's now version number four, and let's go to the final version uh, variation, which is uh, incorporating the high E string together with the B string. Uh, play it first for you, then show it to you.
So it's slightly easier than the one uh, we just played. Uh, we just uh, simply uh, grab the B and the high E string on the fifth fret, barring. <laughs> Barring the first finger right here, and after that, it's the very same thing as we did with the variation of four. Here, you just don't have to move your hand, there's no position shift, so it's very easy. Sounds really weird if I play it, uh, you know, in pieces, but uh, <laughs> together with the music again, it sounds really cool. Two, three. <laughs> then variation. So the most important thing about this lesson is to get this riff down rhythmically and obviously technically so that you have, uh, you know, a new vocabulary in your playing and uh, whenever it comes to playing uh, blues and you go jamming, you know, you're, you're armed now, you can move these riffs to any other key and uh, you're fine to go. I hope uh, you liked this short quickie uh, with the uh, Hoochie Coochie Man riff and um, yeah, see you next time, take care, bye bye.